So, how do you choose a lens for shooting video and what do the different lenses actually look like? In this video, we're gonna be looking at some examples so you can find the perfect lens for your next shoot. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of tips and strategy videos as well as tech gear reviews and demos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of different gear and accessories in this video, so you can see a whole list in the YouTube description. Let's jump into the video. So if you've recently picked up a DSLR or a mirrorless camera that has interchangeable lenses, you might have found yourself stumped a little bit as to what different lenses do and what kind of results they actually give you as far as how the image looks. I mean, I think that we all generally know that, you know, a zoom lens can get a little bit tighter and a wide lens is gonna give you a wider shot, but there's a few other things that go into it. So in this video, we actually kinda wanna go th through some examples so you can actually see exactly what lenses look look like on certain cameras, as well as share some tips along the way. But first, there's three questions that you wanna ask yourself when picking out a lens. And the first one is, what are you shooting? And that's your subject matter. You know, in some cases, maybe you're shooting a bride or you're shooting a wedding and you're doing video and you want the image to be more flattering on maybe a body type or a body shape. That's gonna go into lens choice. The second question that you wanna ask is where are you shooting? And then when you start to think about that, maybe the place you're shooting is gonna have low light conditions, so you need a lens that will actually do well in that. Or maybe it's a really tight, constrained place. So even though you want a certain look, you only have so much space to deal with. That's gonna influence your lens choice as well. And then the third question to ask yourself is what is your budget? Because there's a lot of amazing lenses and amazing glass on the market, but it also can get pretty expensive. So it might be out of reach depending on what project you're working on or what finances you have available. But in this video, we're gonna be focusing mainly on just the basic kit lenses and actually a lot of affordable lenses kind of for creating YouTube videos. But a lot of the tips and principles will apply even for higher end lenses. Okay, the first lens that we're gonna check out is the Canon 18 to 55 kit lens. So this is the lens that you're gonna get included with most DSLRs and even other brands that you would buy. This is a pretty standard focal range. So let's throw it on the camera so you can actually see what it looks like at the different focal lengths. All right, so right now you're seeing the kit lens at 18 millimeters, and obviously when it's zoomed out like this, it's too far. So the way we'd compose the shot is we'd move the camera fo forward so it gets closer to me. But this brings up one of the first, kind of most important things about lenses is that the different focal lengths create different distortion in the image. So what I mean is now this shot's pretty good, but there's a little bit of a bending to it. And actually, if I'm right in the center of the image, it's actually gonna kind of make me appear a little bit thinner because it's gonna kind of squeeze me down here in the middle. So what you would actually want to do to kind of get a different shot dynamic is move the camera backwards. So we're gonna go back to where it's about mm, eight to 10 feet from me and you could see me on the other angle here. Now what we do is we'd actually zoom the camera in to more like 55 or somewhere where it's more a little like 35 millimeters or something like that. And now you're actually going to kind of create more of a true to life body shape for your subject. So what you're actually seeing right now is 30 millimeters on the kit lens. And so it gives you kind of a good idea of how you would position the camera as well as the shot. And if we wanted to kind of have the same shot composition, but to see how it changes the way my body looks, we can move the camera even further back, and then we'll zoom in all the way to 55 millimeters, as far as this kit lens goes, to kind of get that shot composition. And again, now my whole kind of body should be fuller because of the lens compression when you're zoomed in, kind of gives you a whole different shot. And it's gonna give you less on the edges. It's not gonna be a wide shot, but it even changes the way your set looks. But to do this, you need a little more space because now the camera's about 15 feet away from me. And because we've got this mic with the wire going on, we're able to actually do this. But this gives you kind of an idea how different focal lengths adjust how the image looks, not just how large it is. 
Now for our next comparison, let's talk about vlogging a little bit. Now most vloggers typically want a wide shot. If you've ever used a camera where you felt like it was just right in your face because it was zoomed in so much, that's why a lot of these point and shoot cameras are pretty popular because they start pretty wide, but let's compare it. Now this is a Canon G7X. It's a focal length of 24 millimeters up to 100 millimeters, and the Sony RX100 and different cameras like that have similar focal lengths. So let's look at a shot of what 24 millimeters actually would look like. So this is 24 millimeters, and as you can see, I have this uh, Joby Gorillapod SLR, which helps me get the camera a little bit further away, but you can see how far I have to hold it with my arm here as well as what the shot composition is here. And then again, this is at 24 millimeters. So now let's cut over to the Canon SL2 at 18 millimeters to see the difference between 24 and 18. Okay, so now we've got the Canon SL2 DSLR with the kit lens at 18 millimeters. And so you could see kind of how far it is. And now here's the shot composition compared to the 24 millimeter starting focal length of the G7X. And so you have a pretty good wide shot here, but what's nice about having you know, a DSLR is you could go as wide as the 10 to 18 to really give you a different perspective. And this is very popular for vloggers. So then again, this was 18 millimeters. Now let's check out what 10 millimeters looks like on the Canon SL2 DSLR. Okay, so now we've got the 10 to 18 lens on the Canon SL2. And so here's what this shot looks like at 10 millimeters. And as you can see, it's super wide. But this is one reason why this kind of setup is pretty popular, particularly for vlogging, because number one, you also don't even have to hold the camera as far away in those other shots. You saw how stretched out my arm was with this Gorillapod as well. But you can even hold the shot in a little bit closer and get still a very wide shot, as you can see kind of here. And um, now this gives you that idea. And again, with the kit lens, you started at 18, but you could zoom into 55. This one allows you to also zoom in to 18. So if you have these two lenses, you could go from 10 to 18, and then you could go from 18 to 55 and kind of complete focal length options depending on your setup of lenses. So, so far we've looked at a kit lens 18 to 55. We've looked at the 10 to 18 wide angle lens. And one of the things that we learn is that no lens solves every problem. Like that's why you gotta ask those questions. You know, what are you shooting? Where are you shooting? One of the things that's great about a wide angle lens is you can pull off some very tight shots. If you have a limited space, you can actually get some pretty creative things done with it. But also the wide angle lens creates kind of distortion. It creates some different warping. You usually wanna be a lot closer if you're a subject to the wide angle lens or else you kinda of get small and off into the distance. Whereas if you can zoom in more, there is less distortion. And it's actually a little bit more professional feeling. Sometimes YouTubers, we want that wide angle vibe where it kinda of like bends things a bit, kinda of has like a quirkiness, kind of a cool vibe to it. But if you really wanna be professional and kind of have like that almost film look, almost, you know, that's less quirky look to it, that's why you a lot of times would be using more zoomed in kind of portrait or telephoto lenses. So now let's actually cut over to some examples so you can actually see side by side footage and photos of what different focal lengths look like and what they actually do to your subject when you use them. All right, so right now you are seeing the 10 to 18 at 10 millimeters, so it's a very wide shot. And as we've talked about, it definitely creates distortion, right? And it kind of actually probably squeezes down my face a little bit, makes me a little bit thinner in the side, and then stretches the outside of the image. So when I put my arms out like this, it might make them look nice and crazy. So this has definitely got distortion to it. So throughout this test, we're gonna try to keep the same co shot composition, but what we're gonna have to do is move the camera back each time. And so next up, we're gonna to go to the kit lens and actually go to 18 millimeters so you can see what that looks like. All right, so right now you're seeing the kit lens at 18 millimeters. So now distortion is beginning to be removed quite a bit, but this is still definitely a wider angle perspective. And so next up, we're gonna be going to the 24 millimeter. And this is actually one of my favorite Canon lenses because it's super affordable and it also is a little bit faster. And what we mean by that is that the aperture goes all the way to 2.8 
This camera starts at aperture at, uh, at number four, that's f4, which means it's not as good in low light. So this is a great lens to have in your bag if you want a little bit of a blurry background on some shots and you also want shots where there isn't a lot of light, you're shooting at night, you don't have lighting, situations like that. So now let's go from 18 to 24. Okay, so right now you are seeing the 24 millimeter lens and you could get the same look just with the kit lens. You could go to 24 millimeters, but one of the reasons why I wanted to share this lens is because it is one of my favorite lenses. It's, you know, f2.8, so it's a little bit faster. It's good in low light. It's still very affordable. We actually have a whole video out about my favorite budget Canon lenses, so I'll actually link that up on the YouTube card as well as in the description below. But with this lens, now a lot of the distortion is gone. It's got a great vibe to it. It, and it looks a lot different than right those wide angle kind of distorted shots. At this point, you're getting kind of a good accurate body composition of what your subject will look like. However, let's actually jump back to the kit lens, take it all the way to 55 to get an idea of the compression of what it does to the image. So let's cut to that right now. So now you're seeing the kit lens on a Canon 70D zoomed into 55 millimeters, and this is what it looks like. And as you can see from this angle over here, Omar is now about 15 or more feet away. So now you're getting kind of impractical for maybe shooting indoors, unless you have a wider space to have the camera further from you. That's why I said I like that 24 millimeter focal length, because it's kind of in between. And as you go up into these higher um, focal lengths, 55, you're getting more towards a portrait look. So people that want to shoot photography, that really gets the accurate image of what the person looks like and has that good portrait vibe, you usually want to have at least 55 millimeters or higher. It's popular to do that at like 70 or even 80 millimeters. So this kind of has gone through those basic focal lengths. So now let's cut over and share some final thoughts for picking out the right lens for video. Okay, so you just saw how different lenses make the image look different. And now I wanna talk just a little bit about what lenses we use the most at Think Media and why. And the first lens that we use the most really is that 10 to 18. And so whether that's when we're shooting on Canon, we'll use the 10 to 18 lens. This is on an SL2 right now, but even on Sony, and we've been shooting mostly on this because of 4K, and this is Sony A6500 with the 10 to 18 lens. And again, whether that's shots that you can see in the office over here, where it's kind of, uh, sort of has that distorted look, I like that. I kind of like that YouTube vibe with the wide arms. Some people hate it, so it's sort of a preference thing. But for shooting, also in tighter spaces, the office is not huge, so it can kind of get a lot of maybe the background in and things like that. That's why I love shooting with a wide angle lens. The second big lens that we use a lot is the 24 millimeter. Uh, when we're shooting out here on the loft, we have a little bit more of a distance. We can get the camera further away from me. And I have like professional videos that maybe go inside of some of our digital courses, some of our advanced training courses. I really love that Canon 24 millimeter lens. It's practical for shooting there. And then if we head out to shoot social media though, this is kind of why no one lens fits all. If we go out and we wanna get some photos for social media or from some creative images, or even if I was doing event photography, I'm gonna definitely move into higher focal lengths. So for instance, on my Canon 6D here, I have a 24 to 70 millimeter. So this was the setup that I grabbed recently when our friend uh, Sarah and my wife Sonia, uh, we went out and just kind of did a photo shoot. She's expecting, you know, we're the godparents excited about this situation. But uh, besides all that, you can see some of these photos. I wanted kind of a more um, dynamic lens and, and I didn't really want any wide shots. You know, I wanted those more flattering kind of portrait angles and so that's why I went with a 24 to 70. Okay, so I hope that this video has been helpful so far, and this is kind of meant to be a super kind of basic overview and introduction to the subject, and I'll definitely be going in future videos more in depth into what lenses to pick out and why. I mean, there's other lenses that also are relevant for photography, or if you're shooting event video, you might want to use telephoto. If you're shooting some, um, you know, like detailed objects and you want to get really close to objects, maybe like a wedding ring or something, there's macro lenses for that. 
And then when you get into the difference between full frame, frame cameras and even crop sensor cameras, different lenses kind of react different on those. And so I share some of those terms with you. If you wanna do some research now, you could research macro, telephoto, full frame, but we don't really have the time to go into all that stuff in this video. So for basic cameras, I think that these tips can get you going, picking out the lenses that are best for your situation with the desired look and focal length for your situation. Remember the three questions. What's your subject? What are you actually gonna shoot? And what vibe, what do you want that to look like? Where are you shooting? How much space do you have to work with? And what do you want as far as in the background or cut out of the background? And then what's your budget? As you begin to research lenses, you can see that you can spend a little bit of money and just go with the lens that comes with the camera, or you can spend a lot of money on glass. And we will be talking about that stuff in a future video. Question of the day, what are your tips for choosing lenses and what lenses are you using for your videos and why? Let me know in the comment section below. And remember that some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And to check out the video with my favorite budget Canon lenses, click or tap the screen right there. For another Think Media video, you can click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.